Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs, and this is the first Transformers review for this channel, and the first third-party review I have ever done. You may or may not know, I am a writer and reviewer for the website tformers.com, and I'm also a regular on the podcast Radio Free Cybertron. You know, I talk about Transformers stuff a lot there, but this is the first time I've really brought it to this channel. And that's because I'm doing something new. I have never uh, gotten much in the way of third-party things before. I'm, I had one thing that may have qualified before, but this is like the first, let's call it official, third-party purchase I've ever done. One of the misconceptions about me and a lot of the folks on RFC is that we are anti-third-party, and we're really not. I really like the more creative aspects of the third-party field and, and the things they do that nobody else is ever going to do. Nobody is ever going to make a like high-end, accurate set of the Decepticon Justice Division, and I think it's Mastermind Creation working on those, and they look like really great toys, and I'm happy those exist. But on the other end of the scale, we have, you know, six nearly identical third-party Springers, and let's be totally honest, once you hit like the third or fourth identical Masterpiece Springer, you're going to start laughing. And I have. But the reason I don't review or own most of that stuff is much simpler, which is I can't afford it. This I could afford because non-F is unusual for third-party producers. And I'll go into why as we go through this. So these twin laser rifles that Chrome Dome is holding are based on his original 1987 weapons. The stock weapons for Titans Return Chrome Dome are... The same generic gun that Chrome Dome and Brainstorm and Blur and Nautica all come with. And, of course, his own unique Titans, uh, a Titan Master turret, or as we like to refer to them, baby seat cannons. He didn't have a unique weapon all his own. Now he has his original weapons back, and I really like the look of them. Uh, one of the things about Nanef is that they're pretty cost-effective in terms of third-party upgrade sets. These uh, rifles were three dollars each. And unlike something you get from, say, Shapeways, which tends to make things that have a certain texture that shows they've been 3D printed, non-F's things are injection molded, so they feel right. They feel like parts that you would get with a toy. They fe The plastic feels of a piece with chrome dome. The color, which you can probably see here, is not quite as vivid. The, t the color is matched, but in terms of just saturation of the plastic, it's not quite a match for the figure, but that doesn't particularly bother me. I've had accessories like that before. I'd rather have the color like be ever so slightly off and feel right. Because, I mean, there's already certain paint plastic mismatches on here. And that's just a part and parcel of how Transformers are made. This red paint does not quite match uh, that red plastic. So this is just like one step back in terms of saturation from the same color. Because it's really hard to get a good match on things like this. And here's the really great thing about these weapons. The original Generation 1 Chrome Dome was able to mount the twin laser rifles in vehicle mode for kind of attack mode. And these, the 5mm pegs have a notch on the bottom so that you can replicate that here using the places where the uh, windshield plugs into the legs for robot mode. So, you just plug those in there, and you have a pretty good modern representation of something that the uh, Generation 1 Chrome Dome toy could do. Really nice setup. Like I said, they feel they're really good quality, especially for the price. And I just knocked that off, but that's just me. That's not the piece. But yeah, they're a really good quality for the price. They feel right. They look good. I'm really happy with these. Let me start Brainstorm's part with a little disclaimer. This is a very difficult shade to photograph properly. Walgreens exclusive Brainstorm is a really pretty shade of teal because the way most uh, digital cameras work, you can't photograph that color properly. Probably with a still photo, I could fix it in Photoshop, but I'm not very good at that yet. But it's going to look way more sky blue than it actually is. It is just a really pretty color in real life. And I hope you were able to find one. There were none for a long time. Then were, there were tons of them. Because of 
probably parts count limitations in the toy as released, Brainstorm's G1 guns, which were removable from the nose of his uh, jet mode, are just a fixture of his nose slash shield part. They cannot be removed. So the guns you see on his forearms are the non-F Productions replicas of his original guns. Details slightly different than the nose, but they look good. The color might veer the slightest, tiniest hint more green than the uh, teal of the figure. And again, the the difference is accentuated by the fact that his uh, that the plastic for the guns is less saturated than the plastic for the figure. That Hasbro is doing some really vivid colors on these uh, toys anymore, and Hasbro pieces might have looked like that 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, but they're they're just yeah they're just getting a little bit more vivid with their uh, toy plastics, and so this isn't a perfect match for Hugh, but again, it feels right with the toy, and I appreciate that. Besides putting them on the arms like I had before, you can also put them in the hands, which is the, the more standard and recommended method, of course. So for vehicle mode, Brainstorm has a little bit of a problem, and that is that there are pieces permanently where these would go. There's a few options. They're all a little bit not functional for me, but that's going to vary by figure, I think. First off, um, they're all designed to... There's There are pegs on the side of these guns that are designed to slot into various places where you can secure them on the bottom, but they all go into painted spots, so that's going to depend on the plastic and paint tolerances of your individual figure. For example, you can put these here, but they just... That's dependent entirely on tension between the parts and places where they were not supposed to go, not designed to go. And so the shallow pegs just don't really work on mine. You can plug them in this way a little bit more effectively, but then of course Brainstorm cannot sit a level on a table. The other place where they're designed to peg in like that, just as an improvised piece, are on the underside of the wings. Again, the tolerances just don't work out for me on that, I'm afraid. So, the good news is that you can store them on the 5mm pegs as well, but I'm not thrilled with that as a solution. It kind of breaks up the lines of the, uh, of the vehicle mode for me. I mean, to its credit, that does make it look a little bit less blur with wings, which may be something you're looking for. But it also, to me, just kind of makes it look a little bit more Galaga, which is not where I would go with Brainstorm personally. It's not bad, but they definitely work better in robot mode for me than they do in vehicle mode. And the last thing I got for Brainstorm is a little bit contradictory, because while all the other accessories I bought uh, are to make things basically look more G1, this makes him a little bit less so. I got his infamous briefcase from More Than Meets the Eye. If you haven't read the comic, this is a, at first, very mysterious item that he uh, carries throughout the first season and a half of the comic. 30-some issues, and then it is ultimately revealed it is a part of an intricate time travel device he has used to uh, go back in time and try to prevent Megatron from starting the war. Doesn't work out. It's a good story, though. It's worth reading. Pretty much all of more than meets the eye is. But this is an amazingly good match for Alex Milne's art of this briefcase. Yes, they actually went to the trouble of matching the details of a briefcase from a comic book, and I am just really impressed with that. So yeah, it looks good. Nice detailing. It has a swivel piece here so that you can get it in the hand. Let me do that. Reaching around the camera is always difficult for me, but I'm doing it anyway. There. But you can see how easy and quick that was. The only thing I uh, would warn anybody about is that it does feel, whereas the other parts feel like they could have come with a off-the-rack Transformers figure, this does feel a little bit more delicate. It, I had not if it was nice enough as to send mine pre-glued. I misunderstood how it worked. I thought it might actually open. I didn't read the description uh, well enough. My mistake. 
but it was very easy to glue back together and it looks great and it looks fine. That handle is very thin so it looks right scaled to the figure so it could potentially be a little bit delicate so just be careful of, of that. It doesn't particularly feel fragile, but it just looks like it could be if you handled it roughly. So, you know, don't. So yeah, I am really happy with the, uh, with this purchase. Everything, every piece here was $3 each, the, the individual guns and the briefcase. So after shipping, the whole order ran me about $18, which is pretty good, especially going by the usual rate of either uh, third-party or Shapeways things. So I'm really happy with these. Nanef also does more elaborate upgrade kits. They have uh, improved ankle tilts for a couple of the Titans Return figures and some other upgrades. They're all fairly limited run, so if you see anything you like on their website, order sooner rather than later. But I like them, I recommend them, I understand they're working on upgrades for Titans Return Galvatron, and I really want to see what they come up with. But that is going to do it for this review. If you want to see more Transformers stuff, or if you, there's anything you want to know about these or anything else, leave me a comment. I'm happy to reply. And until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!